And what is good, everybody? This is the going to be episode number six of the now newly named, I'm no longer the 1020 podcast, I finally have a fucking name. Yeah. It's going to be the Spinner Podcast, all caps. I don't know, the reason I got, the way I got the Spinner Podcast, there was this homeless guy that was walking down the street, and uh, this is in, in Uniondale, and they had a box logo shirt, and I thought, it, you know, that's a Supreme shirt, but I looked at it, I don't know what the hell it said, but it said Spinner. I, I think it says Spinner, and I'm just going to name that my new pod. That's just my podcast name now. I think that's a decent name. Uh, if you guys want to hit me up, you guys want to be on the podcast, DM me through Instagram. Uh, make sure you, you like this uh, video if you're on YouTube and comment. I got a very special guest. I got the influential, godly, social justice warrior, entertainer, Eddie P., what the fuck is going on, everybody? Shout out everybody tuned in mm-hmm. with my guy right here. Mm-hmm. I admire your work. You Thank you saying? very much. Six was my favorite number for like two days when I was six years old on God, too. But it mm-hmm. went back to five, though. Five is your favorite. God damn it, man. We could have had you before him and had you in the Nah, five. yeah, he's my favorite artist, though. So it all good. It kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know how the universe go. Because your 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 grand page is the Charlie fan, fan page. page. Yeah, Z. Deleted at two million followers, which it actually wasn't, though. But some people mm-hmm. are dumb enough to ask. <laughs> it gives you the beauty of having common motherfucking sense. Right, right. So this, at Eddie P, I've seen it. Eddie P <clears throat> is the is the is the energy, is everything behind. What what's this movement? What would you call this movement here? Uh, fucking delinquency for one. Mm-hmm. Uh, loyalty, friendship, power, mm-hmm. respect, mm-hmm. crip and blood, all that. Okay. But not hell yeah yeah yeah. Oh yeah yeah. <laughs> No, I'm saying just a young group of collectives that I thought like coming up I actually admired. That's why like like with Chow Lee and Lonnie. Well, mm-hmm. Lonnie I met very early in the process when he was in ninth grade. I was in eleventh, met him early. Mm-hmm. I came up to him and told him like, "Yo, your fifth fly, bro." And he was hype, bro. Like you would <laughs> thought like fucking Kim K pulled up on him, bro. I used to be like the Fifty Cent in my school, bro. Like really? you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like murderous. <laughs> like like I'm the dude you walk in. It's like fuck. He got a gun. Really? But yeah, no, nah, never. No, nah, never. Not nah, yeah. My dad was is a police officer, so I couldn't even play the gangster card from an early <laughs> stage. Yeah, I don't let the truth kill me. My truth is only my honesty. Mm-hmm. So, know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm glad I had to be forced to be myself and be funny itself through high school. Mm-hmm. So I really discovered this shit. So, that's where you discovered it all through was high school? Nah, yeah, 10th grade. Because I, uh, 10th grade, I remember that's when I really first discovered Facebook. I kind of seen the platform and like what it was going to do. And, like, I was kind of intrigued by, like, how much people actually use this shit. And, like, I feel like people don't really take advantage of the internet. Right. But at an early age, I really wasn't really going out much. I spent most of my time just smoking weed and being funny all the time. Mm-hmm. So then I remember I dropped a picture just making fun of how, like, girls take pictures on the gram, bro. I remember I had, like, Hollister sweatpants and put, like, two pillows in my pants, bro. And at the time, <laughs> I remember I just dropped it on the page. And then, like, I shit did, like, 600 likes the first day. And at the time, bro, it wasn't, like, now where people just got thousands, bro. I knew people used to get 200 likes, and I was considered Facebook famous. Mm -hmm. So I remember, like, bro, going to school the next day after that picture on God. Like, I, to me, I don't Mm -hmm. know about everybody. Everybody else just, I don't know. But to me, with no attention, bro, I thought, like, I was out of here. Like, bro, I came to school, and everybody was just happy as fuck to see me and shit. Some people maybe think they were laughing at me. Mm -hmm. I knew. I'm like, bro, this is different, though. Yeah. So after that, I kind of just used the platform on Facebook to just be funny every day. And I think people have the misconception that I try to be funny on purpose. I'm just really retarded, bro. (laughs) Yeah, you just do it on Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually enjoy that. Bro, I know what real comedy is. Like, Richard Pryor and, like, fucking the George Lopez is the Dave Chappelle's. That's real comedy. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? What I'm doing, shit, it'll be disrespect to call that comedy compared to that. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? so this is kind of just shit that I freestyle off the mind. Okay, so you're not really into like stand up comedy type. Like that's not really you. you nah, know? not my lane. But it could it with Tom. But I feel like podcasting is a little more organized. I think people would, like underappreciate stand up comedy. And like, bro, there's still huge acts that still bomb in this shit. So know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, I can't compare, call myself that just yet. That'll take some time. Right, right, right. So you you not only though you have you've gotten to a point where you you're not doing just your comedy online but you're doing it in person you're dancing yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. you're getting I heard you were backstage at a Yachty concert or some shit yo which one Cody show oh the Cody show yeah the other night yeah yeah shout out Cody Shane but um. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, I feel like the stage, I never really was scared of it. I kind of just always looked at it for what it was. Like, I think the first time I kind of knew I had, I could be good at this or, like, just not be afraid of having a lot of eyes on me, I hosted a talent show. I sold, like, 150 tickets in two days. Okay. 
And like I, it was a local yeah, talent show? No, my high school talent show. And okay. I wasn't even graduating on time, bro. Mm-hmm. So, and all that money went to the class. Shout out class of 2014. I graduated 2015, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The greatest ones, you know what I'm saying? It take a little time to marinate some good chicken, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was that was the first time. I like So that shit was easy, bro. I didn't write anything down and I bodied that shit. So with time, I kind of, I didn't really ever get on the stage mm-hmm. again. Um, and then in 2017, I went to LA for free. Somebody, uh, somebody just sent me eight hundred dollars and paid for my flight. Some scammer, yeah. Some scammer, yeah. Just, he just, did yeah. You scam them? No, 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 no. He actually just. I told him I couldn't afford to uh, go to California because me and Child just came back from Atlanta. Because mm-hmm. uh, me and Child just started going out there and shit. So some dude just spent eight hundred bucks. We stayed in the Airbnb, and that's what the video that's on my Instagram is in LA. Shout out Clan Life Clothing. They were throwing the show with uh, Uno the Activist okay. and Fawny, Cody Shane, and Warhol. And um, yeah, I was blackout drunk because uh, there was two VIPs. It was the real VIP, the fan VIP, and we was just taking Henny bottles. And then my boy Napalm just pulled me up on stage. And then shout out Soft is Hard on Instagram. She just recorded a video of me, and it just went kind of viral for the moment she had it up. And I just mm-hmm. threw it on my page, and I seen the reaction, and I realized like, God damn, I'm a funny motherfucker. Exactly. <laughs> and then, yeah. know what I'm saying, yeah. And yeah, that was cool. And then we just started going out to Atlanta a lot. You know, Clan mm-hmm. Life Clothing welcomed us with open arms out there and shit. Really taught me a lot about family, bigger than anything. So it kind of just showed me I was where I was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And then. Yeah, so I they would we was just doing shows and shit, mm-hmm. and like bro, I was just getting drunk going on stage. I kind of seen what I was, like bro, I'm just some fat kid that people think is white, but I have rhythm, bro. People don't understand, like bro, I'm yeah. listening to music all day on my yeah. headphones, walking around my room. It's mm-hmm. kind of like practice, but it's not the same time. So when I go up there and hear a song I already like, it's wait, kinda... so wait, you're in your bedroom, and you you just walking back and forth, bro. That that's literally how I uh, that's a, that was the start of how I recently just lost forty pounds. Oh, like, bro, shit. yeah, yeah, because I never lost weight in my life. So I first started was like, yo, if I'm going to do something, I got to start somewhere. So I'll just walk around my room for like an hour or two at a time, <laughs> listening to music and shit, bro. And and, nah, yeah, yeah, just turning up like I'm on stage, bro, uh-huh. envisioning the future. I picture like, bro, Chow headlining the tour. And, and I'm one of the opening man, acts. Yeah, hell yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think that highly myself. So I don't know who told me I'm even going to have a set time, but now I'm saying, let me dream. Mm-hmm. Why don't you get a, you should get into DJing too, man? Uh, I think about that. I kind of want to throw uh more parties like open mics itself, especially for open mic media itself. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to create a platform. I feel like the uh the show scene out here is cool, but like I don't know, man. I don't I don't I see how it was in LA, and I like the old shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, like when the famous Dexes and Twenty One Savage would do a show together, or like mm-hmm. you'll see like a fucking Playboy Cardi and like a, like a Uzi show and then seeing mm-hmm. Cole Bennett's early shows how like all the people we oh, seen blow up yeah, the people that blew up were all on the same cards I feel like mm-hmm. I study music kind of enough so where I kind of I've been seeing so many artists that we all admire just blow the fuck up yeah. from us just seeing what it was and then at a certain point, you think you're just being a fan. You kind of realize that like, you we have the internet now. You could create whatever platform you want while being yourself. Mm-hmm. That's kind of why I'm unapologetic on how I express myself on social media. Because it's like nobody could kill me with my own truth. If mm-hmm. I put it on the line, what the fuck can you tell me? Right, right. Kind of like Eminem's thing, bro. Like, but you yeah, can, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk all my shit, but I know something about you. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you, you pretty much put all your, you, you take your flaws, you put it out there, and then you're like, yeah, cause what I, you got, yeah. Yeah, because I, re- I realized, like, yo, bro, what is there to, 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 to really hide? Like, bro, if I really believe I'm going to start doing the great things I'm going to do, like, all my business is going to be out there one day, every day. Mm-hmm. That's kind of why we look back on so many people, even like Donald Trump that we laugh at, because you could go back and see all the stupid shit he said, and it's kind of like, bro, we're in a time where everything you say is documented. Mm-hmm. It's not like back in the day where you could just bullshit people yeah, and, like, yeah, get yeah, away like, with it. There's, like, a museum now, and I just saw it was, like, maybe, like, a week ago. And they, they put, like, a whole museum section of, like, just Donald Trump's tweets. <laughs> they, they just did that. <laughs> nah, yeah, hell yeah. I don't even dive too deep into politics or all that yet. Because yeah, yeah. I'm really trying to figure out what I even love first before I start picking out topics and shit mm-hmm. that I really want to fight for. Right. But I know that's definitely something I want to get into. I don't want to use this uh, platform to just, like, make money and shit. I feel like that's kind of, like, very stupid and shit. Because mm-hmm. we don't even know what the fuck we're on earth doing just yet. Right. So to put your values into something that's not on the inside or like doing shit to make you feel good on the outside for others it's kind of stupid bro we kind of got to figure ourselves out before we figure this world out mm-hmm. so how'd you meet these guys 
Um, well, you tell me how you met. Well, him. yeah, Lonnie, I met early and shit. Same with Jimmy through high school. Chow Lee, I met him because I remember. Well, I've had Chow on Facebook probably six years. That's one thing I think uh, that I love about Long Island, especially now that I'm 23, bro. Like, uh, there's kids I'm watching graduate college, and it's like, yo, bro, we, I know you because I had you on Facebook, and mm-hmm. you were from a whole other town. Right. We was in ninth grade together, so. With Chow, I kind of always heard about uh, his music and shit. And they had the hood star wave popping and shit. And at the time, I was with someone named Aggie Dave, who was my friend at the time. And he's one of the people that really opened my mind up to, like, following my dreams and shit like that. Uh, so around that time, I was kind of when I was first getting into, uh, like, the music and shit. And, like, trying to help people and, like, learning about clothes and all that. So around that time, I also started hooking up with Lanya a little more. And then I got cool with Chow's, our boy Betty, that's one of the people who made Hood Star by Choice, the clothing mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. And then we hung out a couple times, and Chow was at school. And I remember this motherfucker, Lonnie told me he bumped the song Ways, and I remember I listened to it, and I'm like, yeah, he's about to be out of here. Mm-hmm. And I kind of thought like, yo, you know, this, this shit is cool. Like, there's not many people on Long Island, including my friends, that I'm even listening to their music. Right. Like, I'm actually enjoying it and shit. And, you know, this motherfucker child is Hollywood as fuck. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It took a couple reach outs to get to him. But then one day I was drunk, just sent him a video of me at some mansion at my boy Ben's crib. Shout out to Benches Wong. And fucking, I just sent him a video of us turning up to his song. And then mm-hmm. he was just like, yo, send me this video. So I took that as a chance to send me a number, FaceTime him, our conversation. Two years later, here we are. You know what I'm saying? So around mm-hmm. that time, we kind of just, I mean, like, we kind of seen everything that was happening right now and what's to come, but it was kind of just like, yo, friends first, like, yo, bro, we're cool, you genuine, We I kind of see a lot in you if we just really get better at what we're doing, bro, we have a shot at this shit, bro. Mm-hmm. And then, like, what's the worst that could happen? We have a fucking lifetime of memories. Right. You know what I'm saying, bro? Exactly. It's not that serious. I feel like people just put so much pressure on themselves to have everything that their idols have that they don't, like, they try to escape the reality because they were thinking about millions. And it's like, bro, you got to become a better person day by day. Uh-huh. And that same uh, that same walk of life ain't for everybody. Some people make it to the top being assholes. But, bro, the truth will always expose you. So mm-hmm. you might as well be the human you want to be. And I feel like the process with us will take... I don't know if it's shit. Shit could happen tonight or it could happen 10 years from now. But if you stay down, what's right will come, bro. You kind of can't control the world. We don't even know what the fuck is going on for real. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. So we're just really having a lot of fun with this shit and just working on ourselves and shit mm-hmm. than before this shit. And then when you a good human shit, which you put your effort and love into, will show itself too. Mm-hmm. God damn, you been all spiritual. Nah, yeah, on God, energy is real dead ass though, and I love women though. I don't want to fuck all y'all that's listening. If you're listening, I love you. And to the people that think I'm like all hyped about myself, why are you listening this far into the interview? Mm-hmm. Got him. But oh, yeah. Hell, Yo. So wait a minute. All right. Dude, you sound like a. You know, you should be like a televangelist. You could probably, see, you know, how they make so much money off that, like. Nah, yeah, yeah. I think that with time, though. But I feel like I don't want to be the motivational speakers that haven't even done shit. You're selling dreams you ain't even live. So I feel like I'll get there with time. I need a lot of living to do first. Mm-hmm. But I, I do see the uh, the small amount of influence that I do have. Like the fact I take like any one or two people that embrace me. That shit means the world to me because you don't have to fuck with me. There's so much going on, on the internet that if I'm catching your attention every day of just being myself, it means a lot. Yeah. And I realize I don't have to do the gimmicks or all these Facebook, I mean, Instagram skits for comedy. It's like, bro, I will just say some shit that I'm thinking in the moment and then mm-hmm. I'll get 20 replies from it. All love. I write everyone back. And we, we take pride in the fact that we embrace everyone that supports us. Like, bro, you giving me a platform to talk right now. I, the least I can do is give you a free shirt. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It ain't about now. We're going to get that shit back a million times. Right. And if we don't, bro, like I said, bro, it's oh, we all have a bunch of great memories. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Exactly. Because that's the thing. Like, if nothing, if nothing else, like, we all had, like a, like, a good time together. Yeah. You know? You know, you can take, like, uh, this is, like, probably the best time of our lives. We're in our early 20s, our late teens. Yeah, bro. Whatever. Like, the economies that the best is have. Like, if you are good at what you do, there's people that are willing to give you their money for right, it. Right, right. So, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't really stress about the, like, with Demons Roll Wild, to give you a brief summary, that's my younger brother's vision. Like, this mm-hmm. to do, like, I feel like anything in my life is possible through him, bro. He opens my mind up to so many things. Mm-hmm. I feel like he took a lot of the values that I had and just took the good ones and then created his own. Mm-hmm. So, he kind of is just like, shit, motherfucker, like my big brother, for real. <laughs> you know what I'm right, saying, right, right. Mm-hmm. but like, yeah, he runs the show and shit. He he understands because like, bro, I'm 23 and I'm tapped into the younger culture. But like all the dudes I'm learning about, like, bro, Chippy Red ain't no superstar. The dudes that are 23, 24, yeah. like that's his age group and like all these new artists and shit. So he keeps me closer to what's really going on. Mm-hmm. That's 
that's same with the open mic media. Like, bro, it was his idea. Like, yo, let's just start dropping music snippets. Because right. Instagram, bro, people want to hear a music snippet before the song drops. You can't mm-hmm. lock your phone and listen to it after. No. If it's on YouTube, you have YouTube Premium. You can do that itself. Yeah. Same with, like, uh, the SoundCloud. Like, I remember NBA Youngboy dropped the free D-Dog song. Mm-hmm. No streaming services. So my younger brother, he threw it on the open mic media. We hit a million plays on there. Oh, and shit. I, yeah, that shit got deleted. Our whole yeah, channel right got deleted. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got deleted because of a Playboy Cardi trip Red League that had like 70,000. So, um, but we didn't give a fuck. We just dropped, we dropped, we made a new page that same day. We had a right. regroup. We had a couple Chow songs and Lonnie and Sushi songs that were fucking fire on there. Right. But you know what I'm saying, bro? It's a long journey. We'll be all right. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even a fall. So, first day we relaunched the page, we got 50,000 on the Quando Rondo song, I think, at this moment. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just right back. Because we're putting out content that, like, people are looking up for. So, yeah. like, them one or two people that will know what's going on or just kind of remember seeing us on YouTube or SoundCloud, mm-hmm. they'll hit that following, you know? So if you're getting one person, one subscriber a day, it starts picking up. I yeah. think people are blinded by seeing the masses and it's like, yo, bro, you're mad that all these fucking sheep ain't paying attention to you right now? You have to mm-hmm. grow something organic. Right. I, I've seen Yachty say something that about a lot of these kids are blowing up so fast, they don't really have time to marinate in the culture and really right. explore the underground and watch other people blow up mm-hmm. and look at a lot of people's mistakes and like and what they did good, bro. I kind of feel like that's why I, I pay attention to a lot of great contents because if I can learn a little something from a lot of people, I'm going to get smarter. Mm-hmm. Shit, that's really how the weight loss journey started for me and I dropped 40 pounds, bro. Just mm-hmm. sitting in a fucking depression in my room like, yo, I'm not trying to be a fat fuck anymore. Yeah. Broke all day, you know, started with some push-ups, some music, and then exploring. Like we talked about before we started this, like Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's a huge mentor in my life. He opened mm-hmm. up my mind to like, mad ex- <sighs> like young people just make mad fucking excuses and we're trying to figure out the world too early because I feel like our parents like feel like we're supposed to have it together at a young age, but I'm smart enough to know I'm not, like, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure myself out and have fun to then figure out who I really am and keep doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't realize that Open Mic Me had a couple comments on my, my podcast. Now I understand. Nah, yeah, now hell I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. I was like, are these just, like, some music? Okay, but is it through you? All right. Nah, that's, yeah, that's exactly. That. And, and also, I'll, I subscribe, you know? Yeah, I appreciate that. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. And we're eventually going to start dropping music videos on there. We kind of uh, got influenced from, like, watching, like, Perfect Plug. That's who drops a mm-hmm. lot of child's music videos. Mm-hmm. And, like, Elevator and shit. And it's very low-key. It's not all the extra shit that, like, I feel like a lot of platforms get caught up in covering drama. Mm-hmm. That it ends up the artists that you're trying to cover don't even want to work with you anymore. Because right. you're just chasing the the headlines and i feel like i really want to meet humans bro you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i want to meet my favorite gangster rappers and talk to them about like their mentality and like yo how do you survive and make it to the next level Cause i feel mm-hmm. like there's a lot of kids in the hood that don't know what the fuck they're doing right oh, now sure. and it's and it's like bro how could you you're going through real shit like your fucking innocence was stripped from you from a young age you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. you don't even got nobody to fucking look up to bro like mm-hmm. i ain't from the streets i got a couple homies that Really went through some fucked up shit that I do admire and learn from because mm-hmm. I'm a fucking human. I ain't. That's why I never try to be something I'm not. Because mm-hmm. if you do, bro, the dudes that's out here pretending to be gangsters, you're going to get caught in a situation that only a gangster can handle. And that ain't true. And that's where you get exposed. Mm-hmm. So I, at least I know being myself, every situation that comes into my life, I'll be ready to handle. Right. And if I'm not shit, we get back up and we just fight through. It's right. the point of life. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Man, Going and preaching, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, I was a piece of shit back in the day, dog. Really? So I kind of got my mind right. Yeah, I mean, I was a, a fat kid that was funny as fuck, bro. So mm-hmm. my powers weren't always used for good. Now I'm saying it was a couple casualties of war on the come up of whoa, being whoa, a good human. Casualties we got here. I mean, flaming people that can't forget about a joke from high school and shit, and it kind of taught me the power of words. Cause you have no idea what someone could be going through, mm-hmm. like, and and you just say one comment to them and shit. You could call someone a bum for their sneakers, not knowing like, bro, their fucking mother's addicted to drugs and shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's and their fucking shit's being sold for like crack and all that bug and shit. I don't know, mm-hmm. but you know what I'm saying? You got to be considerate. So it kind of taught me. That's why I, I I don't give a fuck about anybody telling me like, yo, bro, you being some fake motivational person. I think people don't know what it is to really be happy. Or mm-hmm. love themselves, you know what I'm saying? Right, I so. spent a lot of time not being confident years. So now that I'm really feeling myself and I'm proud of everything mm-hmm. and everywhere I go, people are congratulating me shit and it's not for being funny. It's kind of like, yo, bro, I see you and your friends doing your thing. Like, bro, kick this door down for everybody else. It means a lot because I remember what it's like wanting that. Mm-hmm. And then when I got it, I realized it's not about the attention of the cloud. It's kind of about like, the message for real bro like mm-hmm. once you get a platform you could do some good with it right, what you gonna sure. do buy a chain or, or give back or do both I'm trying to do both right what's gonna be on your chain 
Oh, I don't know yet, bro. You know what I'm saying? Fucking like, I might get the fucking John Cena spinning belt on my shit or something crazy. <laughs> like some some crazy shit. But I got to get a house first and like in a fucking house that I could rent out so I can make the money for the chain first. I'm not getting chain first. Right. Um, yeah, I need right. real estate. Real estate. Okay, so you're thinking business-wise, you know. Yeah, dibble and dabble. I've been thinking lately just throwing $20 into the stock market weekly because if okay. I do that for a year straight, Lord knows what will happen. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. Just little things just so I could figure it out. You never know. Mm-hmm. Now that was the I took this finance class. Yeah. And uh, when I was in high school, it was it was I hated that class. But anyways, we had like the stock market trading game mm-hmm. where you where you get like a hundred thousand fake money, but like the stock market like goes uh, live, yeah. so you can invest. So as a joke with my little group, I said, you know what, fuck it, let's, let's put all of our money into Weight Watchers. <laughs> Weight Watchers. Shout out Weight Watchers. They almost said, got a subscription from me. Let's do it. Let's do it. They're like, no, why the hell would you do that? I'm like, who the fuck cares about this game? This game sucks. You know, I don't I don't give a damn about it. Anyways, the next day, maybe not the next day, but the next couple of days, fucking Oprah invests in Weight Watchers. It doubles. <laughs> it doubles. If, if, we if I would have put all the money in there, we would have won the stock market game by far and we would have gotten Nah, money. yeah, exactly, bro. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. That's what you should do, though. Weight Watchers, man. Yeah, Weight hell yeah. I almost got a subscription to them. I was about to give it to them. I really? heard my boy Joey Diaz is fucking with them, and he was losing okay. his head. But then I realized, like, bro, man, this counting calories shit a little too crazy. I'm down 40 pounds, and my head, I'm Salvadorian. We got mm-hmm. big heads, and I'm saying the head don't shrink, so I ain't trying to have that fucking Rottweiler head or look like a lollipop or a bobblehead, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm actually about to get my weight up, you know what I'm saying? Right, okay. Bumping I want my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, a, muscle, a little man. something, a little something. I'm trying to be a young sex yeah. symbol. I feel like people go, fat people get too insecure and start losing mad weight and start looking wild, grotesque type shit. Right, right, you know what right. I'm saying? Right. Because there's those people that, like, they got big, big skeleton, like, you know, the, the, nah, the street yeah. has a body shape. Nah, it's yeah. like the really skinny ones, there's the middle ones, and then there's the... The ones who are just, they're just naturally bigger, you know? It's just the way it is. Nah, yeah, exactly. You gotta take advantage of that. You can nah, become yeah. bulkier. Nah, you know, yeah, exactly. You, just got, you gotta look good and type shit, man. I can see you putting on, like, a button on. Nah, you know, yeah, yeah. button on, going to Miami, you know, driving. Oh, nah, yeah, you know, like, gold Coke chain, hell yeah. Fucking, you know. I gotta even out my tan first, bro, because, like, my face be dark, you know what I'm saying? And then, mm-hmm. like, my chest mad white and shit, so I look like a graham cracker and, like, the <laughs> marshmallow chest. Nah, yeah, I gotta start going out, you know, go know right, what I'm saying? Oh, you got the... You got the um, the water right there. Why don't you just put down a towel? You know. Oh nah, yeah, hell yeah. I'm about to start meditating in the backyard on my real guru vibe. Some shit. I don't gonna manifest myself into being the Buddha I want to be one day. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Buddha of what? <laughs> the world. The world. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. bullshitting, bro. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the way to do it. So what's the what's the vibes for the summer then? Uh, work a lot. Work. Uh, fucking definitely save up a lot of money. Uh, drop a lot of music videos. Try to. You know, where Chow does the gloss fiction, he shoots the videos and edits them. Mm-hmm. I really believe in his mind. I feel like uh, people don't really appreciate his genius yet. And I feel like he, he shoots the videos, he does his own. I don't know if people like, understand, like, Chow freestyles his songs on the Chanel Hotel, engineers the songs, designs his own cover art, drops his own music, then records his fucking video. If he mm-hmm. could, he'll record himself if there was two of him. Right. Then edits the video, releases it, and mm-hmm. then boom. Straight like that. So I feel like, you know, add the video aspect to this. Uh, drop more clothing uh, as of Demons Worldwide and Girls Like Molly. Mm-hmm. And uh, Hood Star by Choice, our homies, they, they run that uh, themselves. So, like, we don't even have to really help other than supporting it, the shit. Because right. that shit's working itself. Right, and then sure. with, like, the Girls Like Molly, that's uh, Chow, Jimmy, uh, Lonnie, with the help of, like, me and Mills and all the other homies. And Demons Worldwide is more mean mills with the help of all the other homies, too. Mm-hmm. So we have a real organic support system. I think people don't realize how much one share really means. I, like I said, people are caught up with getting the like the huge likes, but they don't understand. You really got to work slowly towards it. And if you don't want to, then shit, show me how you could do it faster. Mm-hmm. And if you can't work every day, why? If you're stuck in hell, why stay there? Mm-hmm. You got to work out of it anyways. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I learned that from my boy uh, Gary V and shit. Gary Vee's another big, um, like, influence in my life, too, when it comes to business and all that. Mm -hmm. And teaching myself, like, bro, nothing I want to do is going to happen if I ain't working for that shit, dog. And I'm a lazy motherfucker, so I'd rather work for everything and then have my little passive income in the future so I could enjoy life and nature and all that and Mm -hmm. turn my phone off sometimes. Yeah. I think a lot of kids need to start turning their phones on and really looking at their surroundings and Mm -hmm. figure who themselves are. Because if you really can't stay in private without your phone off for a couple hours or you can't be alone for long periods of time, it says a lot about who you are mm-hmm, and I think sure. we need to really start figuring ourselves out before we try to figure out what we're gonna do the rest mm-hmm. of our lives yeah where are you trying to go into nature hmm 
What are you trying to go for nature? Um, I mean, like, bro, I just really realized, like, humans and, like, bro, that's why I'm good at networking. I understand humans and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's bigger than just, like, I think a lot of people go into networking trying to fucking study all these little things about how to shake hands and how to do this and that. And it's just, like, then you go in a room and you meet someone and you fucking, your energy's obviously a begging-ass energy where you Mm -hmm. want a picture or you want a cosign. I feel like I just admire people and I'm eventually going to be on that level. I don't really see anyone I admire that I can't hold the conversation with them. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So, and I don't really hold people to that. I do hold people to that light, but not to the light where they're anything better than me. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, bro, like, the same brain that creates all these crazy causes is the same brain that's in my head. I just put it towards different things. So, mm-hmm. shit, if I get good at whatever I like, I'm gonna open a lot of doors for myself and the people I love, which really matters more than anything else, bro. Mm-hmm. That's why I value the good times. I'm really living day by day in this mm-hmm. shit. I think that's why people probably have a misconception of me that I don't give a fuck about anything, but I care about a lot. Mm-hmm. That's really why I just don't care about the bullshit like opinions. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. See, when you said nature, I thought you were going to go out to the to the brain forest. No, no, I want to do crazy shit like that, yeah. though. Like, I want to really go to Africa I, and I give back, El Salvador, the... give back, all that. Like, my yeah. goal is to put a... Uh, a school in El Salvador for like kids to learn English. So you know what I'm saying. We oh, bring them shit. over to this yeah. side. We need. You know what I'm saying. I don't know anyone from my country that's young and influential in social media. Mm-hmm. So like, I really wanna. I feel like there's a door open for someone to be that. Yeah, for sure. And if I'm the first one, even if there's another one, I want to work with him because mm-hmm. you know I'm saying there's a lot of kids out there with no hope. We don't even have good sports teams out there. We just got. No. We're known for MS13 and shit like that, yeah, bro. I kind of want to bring more light to my country. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. See, I could see you on, uh, you know that show, Survivor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm too pussy. I mean, I got to learn how to ride a roller coaster first before you I do all that. Hell no, nah, bro. I haven't been to Six Flags yet. That's a goal for this summer, too. Hell yeah. I Are feel you know, I I I, 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 I the big the big ass uh, nah King the car off rip hell yeah know what I'm saying bro okay. nah yeah I just learned like bro I don't have a small cock I don't know why I'm scared of anything know what I'm saying <laughs> like my biggest fear already didn't come true so I'll be fine right okay so you got all the fears in life nah nah hell yeah bro once I seen that my cock so I took, is like a tarantula and I put it on your face you'd be fine nah I'd be like fuck bro like if I sit down in the chair my balls touch the floor so it'll be all good. Know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, bro, I don't really fall too much because my third leg hold me up. Know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. Nah, I'm bullshit. I'm bullshit. Shout out to 555 deal. I heard I heard that um like dudes that have like really big balls just have like the smallest dicks. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold up here. No. <laughs> Welcome to the cock podcast. Bro, bro, I'm telling you, so I'm talking to people behind me, by the way. So, no, when you ever on that Pornhub page, on the, on the page you, see, you see the wackest shit. Ever, okay? You'll see, like, hentai. You'll see, like, gay dudes. You'll see, like, you'll see anything. Yo, you yo, see. Yo. Everything's, there. everything's there. Everything's there. Okay? The one, one of the craziest things are these, there's these people that get off to, like, um, women teasing like dudes with small. Now, nah, well, well, fe- fe- yeah, fetishes yeah, like are kind of sick in America. It was a fetish thing, right? I, I learned. I'll, oh, not even. Well, what were you gonna say? Yeah. So like, so what they do is they'll have like, these hot porn stars, or whatever, and these dudes with these big ass balls and these like micro micro cocks. They'll like poke their balls and like fucking like flick their like little. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy because people are probably listening to us and think that we're crazy. But like, I have a home girl that uh, tells me how, like, there's a college professor that pays her to, like, watch him be in a cage or, like, she'll put him in a cage and shit. What? Like now, on God, bro, on God. Like, and it's crazy, bro, because, like, I- I've learned that, like, that's why crazy shit don't, like, really, like, I know there's sick-ass shit in this world that I can't control and shit. And mm-hmm. it's like, yo, people are really out here fucking bugging. Yeah. And to each his own, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I realized, like, man, this shit is not that serious. Because right. whatever I got going on ain't as bad as other motherfuckers. No. That's why I feel like mental health is really what'll save the world, bro. Cause that, like all these people out here living day by day, mm-hmm. not facing their problems, and just throwing all their fucking insecurities and fears on other people is yeah. really what's fucking everything up. You right. think serial killers just be like, man, murder so far? Like right. motherfucker, they got some <laughs> fucked up shit that happened right, to them. Right, right. Well, what do you think about Ted Bundy then? Ted Bundy, I don't really know much about him. I don't okay. really know much about uh, like that many serial killers. I kind of watched all those documentaries when I was younger. They were intriguing as fuck though, mm-hmm. uh, to say the least. Yeah. Especially with this country, we have a, a, a like an obsession with violence, I feel for like. For sure, for sure. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, okay, so on the last podcast, I asked Eddie P, what, what is the right way to slide into a girl's DM? Okay, I've not, on God, never slid into a woman's DM. I'm sure a lot of people haven't, but a lot of people do. And I know that somebody, hopefully, here, who slides into DMs, is watching this right now, or listening to this right now. And they need advice from the maestro himself. So... How we do this? 
Well, number one, be yourself. And number two, if you're not going to be yourself, just tell her, yo, I just came home from jail. What's the vibes? I'm hard as rock. <laughs> and that's it. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to all my young men out there that's getting dubbed in the DMs a lot, bro. It's not that fucking serious, dog. Don't be getting mad at girls because they don't answer your DMs and you start talking shit. You look wild, desperate. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's too many girls out here to be stressing over the ones that don't want you. You're not that mm-hmm. important to this society. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So just keep going with the groove, young fellas. Right. Right. There's someone so, for everyone, I'm saying. I've been learning that lately now that I look good, but we really? didn't even get into that. Really? So now with the weight loss... Has like oh, no, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, ca- it's kind of overwhelming, though. I kind of realized, made me realize I don't even want all these dumb girls that are in my DMs and shit. Shout out to them, you know? Shit, man. But, you know what I'm saying? your DMs, though. Yeah, sometimes, bro. I ain't oh, that, it ain't hell. that great. Don't think, nah, it's like a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Some oh, chop, it's a, yeah, yeah, some chopped cheeses in there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some tanks, and, some yeah, nah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. But, bro, I, that shit is 9-11 in the DM sometimes, oh, right? Hell yeah, man. yeah. We went there in New York. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nah, but yeah, hell yeah. But yeah, that's the advice I get a young man. Be yourself, bro. Stop stressing, man. And don't harass no woman that don't want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just had some... I just had some fucking crazy-ass question. I fucking forgot. Anyways, whatever. All right. In the between... All right, well, I'll just give you the question I asked him at the end of the podcast. This is not the end of the podcast, but I just... Yeah. I'm just trying to remember this damn question. Who win a fight? A penguin or a chicken? Who you got? Damn. He said A Town. I forgot for A Town is O D, bro. Yeah, I, I mean, like, what penguins do other than waddle? Like, can they really get it cracking? But they got that, that bulkness. The chicken's got the speed. Yo, I would just do this. Is I don't know. I'll just about. headshot both of them to stop that shit, bro. It's just like, bro, your really? dad has a good general toss chicken just walling out, bro. Just be mm-hmm. chill out, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going with the chicken because they probably taste better. Okay. Alright, so that's... <laughs> nah, yeah. You like the chick? You nah, like yeah. Chicken? Actually, yo, and shit? just on a side note, bro, I found out that polar bears are fucking savages, bro. I, don't, I thought I was mistaken because of fucking Klondoki bars and, like, Poland Springs. <laughs> like, like, I thought I thought you could fucking just hug them. I thought polar bears was cool as hell and yeah. shit. I didn't know they're fucking demons, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, shot, fuck the polar Dude, bears. they, like, rip, like, walrus's heads off. Nah, they're, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Fucking... I heard it's to keep, like, the population under control, though, ain't it? Uh, walruses? Well, like or out just... there, or are they just assholes? Yo, fuck, <laughs> fuck polar hungry, bears. Man. Yeah, man. I think they're just hungry. Shout out to polar bears. Right. I ain't judging y'all. Right. No, no. Do you know what is um, what is the, the white-tailed deer here in the U.S.? That's a big problem. Like they're really? overpopulated. Yo, like we should all, we should all, all of us, all what do we got here? Seven of us. We should all just put some hunter gear on. We we put we get some rifles and everything. Yo. We go out to the woods where I'm from in Maryland. Yeah. All right. We we go out there. And then we just all just go deer. Yo, yo, and, and no offense to all my uh all my pita feeders and all that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Shout out all my, my vegans or whatever, vegetarians. Yeah. But like, yo, I heard there is like a, we do got to start killing these deers. I heard that's why like yeah, hunting ain't really that bad. Yeah. It's kind of population control. Mm-hmm. Like, ain't they fucking shit up for like, they're, they're like. Uh, Dude, there's zombie. I heard there was zombie deer because there was like this, um this like, uh what is it? This microscopic like, um, uh, what do they call Infection them? or some shit? No, 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 no. It's like a parasite, like a parasite, parasite yeah. that like. Took took over these like deer's bodies and killed them. They took them over and these deer's like ran rapid. So you think how many deer's you think heard Triller? Triller? Yeah, like you seen the zombie routine dance that's in Triller. <laughs> how many of those deer's you think thinking themselves like that? Or you think they're just bugging? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I would yeah. actually, that would be a cool remix, man, for Child's next video. You know, you have Yo, a bunch of Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, you background. gotta be optimistic, you know, man. You know, on their two legs and everything. Nah, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Shout you out would, Rudolph. Would, RIP the Blood Reindeer. Mm hmm. You'll put a, we'll put a, a verse for you on there. Start oh, on. nah, yeah, hell yeah, bro. You, you know, actually. Music? I have one song that I record. I have a song with Chow and Musachi, bro, too, really? which is crazy. And all I did, bro, was literally just take OGZ's whole flow of Freak on the Low. So I'm okay. basically O Peasley okay. for one song, bro, and I was uh-huh. drunk as fuck, and that was it. Damn. So, bro, there is an unreleased Eddie P song. I'll sell it to the label when, you know what I'm saying, when I have more leverage for my, right, for sure. for my musical sure. situation. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually a ghostwriter for a lot of people. Really? Nah, yeah, Lana Del Rey, Billie Eilish, oh, all, those, all the heavy All the industry plans. Nah, yeah, I learned from Chow and Lonnie, and then I just mm-hmm. take the their old songs and give it to the industry plants out here and then I feed the world. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Doing good that way. They're yeah. ripping you off then if you... Nah, you yeah, exactly. Nah, and I also want to address the uh, little Uzi comparisons that I get from everybody. I okay. feel like people are like, oh, Uzi, Uzi, booba. Like, every time yeah. they see me, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, yo, I'm not little Uzi when you see me in person, bro. Like, right. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I know I look like him without the face tats and shit, bro, but like... 
It's overwhelming. Uh huh. Who do you think is a better? Uh, you said Anwell is a better one for you. Hmm? Anwell's Anwell. nah, Anwell's more of a comparison because I could tell we're both losing our hairline and he's okay. trying to hide it as much as I am. <laughs> so you know, what I'm saying we're on the same boat. Yo, he's on. He's in. He's gonna be at the Coliseum on for the real? 15th, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. You yeah. gotta go, go. No, what you'll do? You'll just hop backstage. Just nah, like yeah. Did, just like you did with the other ones. Nah, yeah. And then you'll get upstairs. I mean, upstairs on stage. Bro, and I'll sing up there. Hey, I get a bit up there, and it's like I'm out of here, bro. <laughs> I have garden dreams there. anyways, yeah. Okay, all right. See, when you said you were on a track, the first thing is, I thought you were going to be like a DJ Khaled thing where you just... Oh, like nah, songs. like I tried to rap. Like I thought like it was that time, but I was fucked uh-huh. up. But like, nah, yeah. yeah. I thought about that. I do want to uh, drop a, a like an open mic media uh, project for it though. Okay. Like uh, yeah. one day eventually, probably get all the artists. I don't want it to be a bunch of throwaways with people. Like, I don't organically... I want to do it more when we have a platform, we have something to offer. Mm-hmm. Cause with the open mic media thing that I do want to do one day is like I know there's mad artists out here that like like Chow and Lonnie that like are being overlooked. Which you know right. what I'm saying it's not a big deal. We don't fucking think about. It. We're not the people that look at who's not fucking with us. We're just grateful for the people that we can build with. That's why it gets bigger and bigger by mm-hmm. the day. You know, every one new supporter, and we make people know that they're our friends and supporters. You're not just some fan. Mm-hmm. When you hit me up, you're not dick riding, bro. You don't have to fuck with me. So right. I really value the fact that you do. Mm-hmm. But like, so over my media, once we have like a bigger platform, I do want to start giving somewhere for like artists to, to be able to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Open their, open their fucking, their art to new people. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And I feel like the fact that I'm going to do interview anyone, like any human that could give me a good conversation, bro, mm-hmm. you have a story. So throwing, and then whoever, whether they bring two supporters from all these different worlds, bro, you don't know. And a lot of, like, people talk about I'm staying in my lane. There's no real lane anymore on the internet. Everyone's into everything. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I My mind goes from, like, bro, I'll watch some fucking Discovery Channel shit, and mm-hmm. then I'll watch some fucking bugging, like, little pump vlog on No Jumper. Uh-huh. And then, like, I'll watch a Joe Rogan, and then I'll watch some Jordan Peterson. Like, bro, it's the internet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't really let things get my mind too jaded, so I, I'm just open to everything. Mm-hmm. So what would be some of your sayings then? If you were DJ Khaled, he's got like all those goofy sayings. What would be your saying? My saying? Fuck. I don't really know. Bro, hell yeah. Fuck it, it's summer. Fuck, Fuck it, it, it's summer. summer. That'll be my, okay. my thing for this summer. In the middle of December too? Yes, at all times, bro. Because every day is a sunny day when you love yourself. Oh my god. Damn. Fuck. That I is another, like, you should definitely trademark that one. Nah, yeah, exactly, bro. I'm, I'm trying to give all the free game possible. That's another thing. To all you young creators out there that have nothing to show, bro, stop thinking your shit is so fire mm-hmm. to where you can't share or help anyone. Like, we do learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Stop. Don't think you're better than anyone. Stop, like, bro. I don't know. I let everyone know what I got going on because if you take whatever knowledge I'm using to help myself, that mm-hmm. doesn't take from my plate, bro. There's enough room for everyone to eat. Mm-hmm. And if you go crazier with something that I taught you, it just showed I didn't put it as much work in you so there's no hate in my shit no mm-hmm. other man shining will stop my shine there's a lot of stars in the sky you know what I'm saying <laughs> my goodness oh wait what uh so you said Discovery Channel what are you watching on the Discovery Bro, Channel I don't know I just be learning about like animals and shit I don't really be paying attention sometimes I'll be looking for like fights and all that bugging shit mm-hmm. I've learned that chimps are assholes and shit uh-huh. like I learned that uh, polar bears are assholes too I yeah. learned that and like just, I don't know, I, I just started learning all the shit that little animals do to live in their society is shit that humans do, like, without us fucking realizing. Mm-hmm. Like, so, how the chimps assholes? I mean, we all shit, we gotta ask Joe Rogan that, but, like, man, these motherfuckers is just brutal. They torture each other, they ride really? from each other and shit, hell yeah. Anybody look up whatever chimpanzees got going on in their little sets out there, bro, they, they some wild motherfuckers. <laughs> I heard a story about how, like, they, they created a reward system for chimpanzees. And they were giving them like coins so they could, like, they'll trade in the coin for lollipops. And what the chimps started doing, they just started giving the coins to the female chimps so they could fuck them and they could go buy the lollipops. <laughs> so these are some savage motherfuckers, know what I'm saying? That's like, it's like, and that, and, and, yo, and all, here. yeah, and all that bugging shit I be talking about is why that I can be so confident in the field I am with music and helping people. Cause I feel like I'm myself first, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, give myself a lot of alone time with my I'm really content being alone like this morning when I talked to you bro I was just in my house got off the phone with Chow bro hit mm-hmm. the little wax pen and then I'm just doing a lot of research like on the internet and just learning new shit bro mm-hmm. I feel like all outside information I take in just goes back to the greater good of what I'm trying to do in my life mm-hmm. and you never know who what information you can have when you're having a conversation with a stranger mm-hmm. so what it, what were you researching then 
just random stuff. Like today, I spent time watching uh, the Brilliant Idiots podcast with like Charlemagne and Andrew shows. Mm-hmm. And then like uh, sometimes I'll just watch some Gary Vee or sometimes mm-hmm. I'll just look through my fucking recommended because, you know, the government's watching us. And yeah, they give sure. us the they most fucking obvious. Like, bro, I see Essentia water ads all day on Instagram and like yeah. that's all we drink. Yeah, I know. I, I got to cover my cameras. Yeah. I got to cover my camera. Nah, yeah. With, like the little post notes and shit. Yeah, that's why I feel like people don't understand. We're going to get to a point one day that everything about you is going to be all yeah. on the line. Like, yeah. bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I, I used to post. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It I used to post fucked. crazy shit in high school. Yeah. Back when, like, people really knew how to take jokes. So, like, if any of my old tweets or anything resurfaced and shit, I would, like, and people try to come at me for, like, just making, like, fucked up jokes about mm-hmm. whatever and really making fun of people, I'll just tell them, like, bro, well, I had a platform back then, too, and no one said mm-hmm. anything, so. Judge yourselves. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, bro? I feel like this, uh, sometimes people get a little too blinded. I feel like we see too much truth on the internet. So everybody tries to give a fuck about so much thing and they're stressing themselves out. Mm-hmm. And it's because, like, bro, we're seeing so much fucked up shit watching the news. That shit corrupts your minds at a certain point, bro. You don't need to see all that negativity all day. Mm-hmm. If anything, that's why you kind of got to be careful how you use the internet. Right. So who would you want to, who would you want to learn from or who would you want to talk to if you, where you start your podcast? Um, you like people I really want to have an uh, interview with, uh, NBA Young Boy, definitely, because okay. mm-hmm. I feel like I, uh, I feel like he's very judged and he really has a story. Like sure. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, artists like that that, yeah. that I feel like uh, they don't do interviews that like because like people just want to know the drama. I want to know the human behind it. So like people like NBA Young Boy, I want to interview a Joe Rogan. I want to have a, a Gary V, and then even go tap into different like with skateboarding. Like I would love to do like even just like a Rob Dyrdek interview and shit. Like uh-huh, that, yeah. like just I mean, and Rob Derrick, like you know what I'm saying, just people that I grew up seeing, like uh-huh. and kind of like I take a lot of influence from No Jumper too, because yeah. I kind of feel like he followed Joe Rogan's um, blueprint too, as to where they were just sure. interviewing everyone in every field mm-hmm. that you have a little knowledge of, and at the end of the day, we're fucking humans. It's not that deep. Like I feel like radio interviews kind of ruin for some people because mm-hmm. they don't know we could talk how we're talking right now right. because there's just sponsorships involved, there's mm-hmm. fucking advertisements and all this crazy shit. I feel like I'd rather grow slowly for who I really am than blow up fast because a bunch of sheep care about me for the moment. That's true. That's why all these artists that right now that like we seen last year blowing the fuck up with face tats and all this shit mm-hmm. that like weren't doing it organically like the little Zans and the little pumps. No offense, because I'm gonna know you guys one day. I think I'm on that level if you guys are still around. Mm-hmm. Per power to you. Right. But um, I feel like the labels just push them and throw them all in our faces for like one the, year, the and then plants, you, and yeah. then you leave these kids for dead a year later, and you know what I'm saying? And then it's like yeah, it's fucked up yes. because these kids will do whatever to catch their dream, bro. These mm-hmm. kids don't have confidence. These no. kids don't even know who they are, yeah, and, you, and you exploit them to the world. You let the world judge them, and then you leave them for dead mm-hmm. with less success than the year before, so they don't even know how to handle it. Yeah, it was like I saw like this. There's this new series on YouTube, and it says exposed on industry plants. It was um. Jumex. Jumex, yeah, Jumex. yeah. That that was that was uh Andy that, Goff, um was that other That one? clever dude the Clever I didn't yeah, know he's thirty four years bro. old. Yo, shout out Clever. I mean you you seem like you're a sick fuck, but hey man, to each his own. Yeah, goddamn, like he was on like Juice World's project. I didn't know who the fuck this guy yeah. was and then He ex- yo, he uh clever man, you gotta be a little smarter too. And this goes to all the young brothers. If you wanna be an industry plant do not go on Facebook and talk about, yo, in six months, everybody going to be on my song. Y'all going to see it. And then you post a $200,000 watch and tell people you have half a million dollars. Because now we see the, you left the blueprint out of that. There's literally labels that will find you. If they yeah. see anything, they'll just pay you to sell your song and all, all your shit. Mm-hmm. And then see what you do with it. No shade, bro. You know what I'm saying? We could have a conversation any day in the future. But, you know, little things like that that I try to... Yeah. I look at because I do see that this industry is kind of very fucked up and very blinded yeah. because a lot of people have the wrong values and what's going on out there. People mm-hmm. are trying too hard to be cool and they realize the coolest thing you could be is yourself because that's how you'll grow. You know who you are. So how can you stop being a better version of you? Mm-hmm. I feel like the best thing about self-improvement and the worst thing is that your job is never done. Mm-hmm. For yeah. sure. So all right. So right now I'm in the, step of the second time I'm in the, in the Chanel Hotel. Uh, I'm blessed to be here once again. What's your favorite Chanel Hotel memory? Ooh, um, shit. I don't know. A lot of them. I kind of... Ooh, the party. The album release party. We threw a whole fucking party mm-hmm. for Usachi and Chow Lee tape. Okay. And I don't know how we all forgot to ever just drop it or bring it up. Like, yo, bro, what's going on with the album? Nothing. We just <laughs> threw a fucking party in this bitch because Jimmy just had the fucking weekend off. And Jimmy's a fucking... Jimmy is dead mothers. This man is literally like the dude that I believe our lives 
should, should be in his hands because mm-hmm. he's the manager. He's the dude that when everybody's sitting around like idiots, like, yo, bro, where, where do we find someone to print shirts? Google, right there. Yeah. He uses the power of the internet. So Jimmy literally built the whole studio for his friends to record in here, and he's never recorded a song himself. So I think like people like that are people we need in the group because you know like what your friends will do one day, mm-hmm. and you actually do believe. So you know what I'm saying? We're right. grateful to have him because, like, bro, all these hits that everyone's making all come out of here. Right. And that's off the greater good of someone making their parents deal with a bunch of young assholes pulling up to their house and being in the studio all day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It takes a different type of loyalty to be willing to sacrifice that. For sure. And even your own privacy and time. So we threw the party in this bitch and then we just fucking just went up in this bitch. That was around the time Obama didn't hit Billboard yet and we were the ones pushing Obama to everyone we knew. Uh-huh. That's one thing about us. Every time we get into a new artist, we really embrace them. We're not haters, yeah. bro. We really love seeing people come up. Right. Like Lil Tech is from Long Island. We could easily... Really? Like, yeah, Lil Tech. Well, he's from, he's from Queens and he moved to Long Island from what he said in his interviews. Me? Nah, yeah. hit him up and try to get him on the damn podcast. Nah, what yeah, bro. Fuck? Hell yeah. So like, and I hear a lot of people like, yo, he's a fucking nerd. He's this, this. Now I'm like, yo, that's probably the best thing about him. That's probably why he's gravitating. I yeah, think people yeah. don't realize because like, I seen a tweet like, yo, they letting everybody rap now. Like, since when was rap only about being gangster? You know what I'm saying? Right. And I feel like there's a lot more kids that can relate to the kid who played video games and makes music because it mm-hmm. sounds good. Yeah. And like, yeah, he puts a couple gun bars. Who fucking doesn't? It's music, bro. It's right. not that deep. Right. It's, have fun with it. Mm-hmm. So I love that. And I feel like that's why he's being embraced so well because he's really himself. And there's a lot of kids that look at him. as like, yo, if you could look like that. And just be a nerd and fully embrace it, bro. I could do it too. We yeah. have the internet. The yeah, possibilities are endless. I think that's how like Namir also like called on a lot. Yeah, he's yeah. GTA and like, yeah, yeah he did. Of, like, I feel like he ran away from that uh, that image. Though. I feel like I feel like in, yeah. and and the thing is like uh, no shade to him, but I feel like he I feel like he should have embraced that side of him a little more. Right. Because it would have opened you up to a whole other group of kids instead of looking at that like that's some lame shit you did. Because a lot of kids that you don't know when you're saying like, man, I ain't into that like weird ass game and shit or whatever. I don't even I'm not even quoting him or none. But you know, some kids might take offense to it. You know, there's not a lot of smart people on the internet. You know no, what I'm saying? No. That's like I think how X got big. Like a part of the reason he got big too, because okay, yeah, he was going to jail and everything, but he was so relatable. Like when he would go mm-hmm. on these. Uh, he would do like gaming live streams and he would do like yeah he was unapologetically himself yeah. Yeah. even with that's why I do admire ex because like yeah he was a monster and all those allegations that he had a, a lot of them were probably true but he was always willing to talk about them and I know he was waiting for the right time to really throw his truth all out for people to openly judge him but he wanted mm-hmm. that he knew people were gonna judge him yeah. he just knew I'm pretty sure he was smart enough to know like bro my truth can't kill me if I'm really meant for this shit right. and it wasn't he was really he was really good I feel like when people say stuff like Tupac of this generation and shit I feel like who are we to tell the young kids who they think is the greatest of all time we don't know how many kids in this world sit alone in their room depressed every night whether they like shit Bill Gates kids got problems you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. that's why people be like oh he makes fucking music for like depressed uh, middle school kids I mean uh, middle class white kids and shit like bro the middle class white kids do be depressed bro like you know what I'm saying no, that's facts. everybody that's everybody right has here, man. bro yeah. you yo bro you could literally have everything you ever want in life and be depressed if you don't fucking have progression bro exactly you know what i'm saying yeah, i think sure. we need to stop uh undermining people's problems because we have harder ones fuck your problems <laughs> like mm-hmm. bro everybody mm-hmm. has to get through some right so what's the vibes oh the vibes tonight man i'm saying man city boys with city girls party tonight man you know child leave about to drop shit shit soon lonnie love about to drop some shit demons worldwide's about mm-hmm. to drop some shit girls like molly about to drop we have uh clothes coming out soon uh, wait, you mean vibes tonight or vibes in general? Oh, um, nah, tonight, 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 tonight. Oh tonight, tonight. Uh, well, today we were shooting Lonnie Love's music video for what music video? Lon- What's on Lonnie? East Side Romance. For East Side Romance. Now I'm saying that shit about to drop soon. You know Lonnie's second music video out. Yeah. So and uh, it's fire. it's about to be Lonnie Love season too. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's a city boy summer. But for all the dudes that want to be a city boy and realize you can still be a man and be a lovey dovey dude, that's Lonnie Love right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lonnie Love's a real uh like bro. Lonnie, I really met him when I did come up to him. It's crazy. Uh, I literally, like I said, I came up to him because I thought he looked cool and we dapped up and then of course how the universe works, he came to my uh, house like a month later with someone else and we got cool and then like uh, after high school, we went to like an Aggie Dave show together and shit and we really got cool. We got closer there and we hung out a couple more times 
And uh, I remember we were drinking Henny at one of our boys' cribs one day. And we talked about, like, yo, we actually, we should try to do this shit, bro, like, together, you know? Mm -hmm. Lord knows what you could do with music. I didn't even, bro, I thought Lonnie's music was garbage at the time. He was just cool. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. like, I just seen the image, bro, and I know him personally. And I know he has a good heart. I feel like people with good hearts are going to win. Yeah. So sure. we really we really got cool and we really got close into this shit. And then, like, that's when we had met Chow brought together and shit. And I would tell Chow, like, bro, you got to fuck with Lonnie. And, like, bro, I don't know. I think Chow was kind of iffy, like, bro, why do you keep throwing it in my face that I'm going to be cool with some dude that I don't know? Yeah, yeah. And they met, and now they hang out more than me. That's why I don't really even be around or in the Chanel Hotel as much, bro, because I know my friends are fine. I talk to them every day. And they, I, the thing that I love about them, bro, is that they know when they don't see me for a long time, there's no animosity. There's no, none of that. They just know, bro, I'm on a mission. I'm on my own mission as a man, bro. I don't want to be the dude that's just a background dude and just wants to live off them, bro. I want to have my own goals. I want to, I can't wait for the time that we don't have time to be together all the time because that means mm -hmm. everybody's doing what we really need to be doing because we're right. all men at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. All right, to finish this out, I need one story, one Henny story from you. A Henny story? Holy shit. Oh, You've been over 21 for a minute now. Yo, tell hell yeah. Tell, tell, tell Dan. And then we went to the fucking uh, Amadeus. Oh, Amadeus. What happened that night? Perk and the cop in the, what's it called, in the parking lot. And we was just bugging. Which, what time was, what happened with that? Nothing. Oh, remember when I ran up the fucking uh the the, the tab? Oh, yo, bro. I, first of all, bro, I I am a top notch tab runner upper. Really? Now I'm saying, bro, uh -huh. I'm the dude that if I like, bro, I remember like uh, we was at fucking. Well, my first time realizing this was like a fun finesse mm -hmm. was like, bro, I went to the bar and I remember I used to work at Pier One, so they gave me a little debit card and it was empty. And I remember uh -huh. I just passed it at uh, shout out, yo, shout. Nah, let me not say the bar because I'm gonna go back. <laughs> but yo, I just gave them a dead fucking debit card and I just ran it up for like 200 300 dollars a straight Sheesh. Hennessy for the gang bro uh -huh. and then like we left and it's like bro it's a dead card what the fuck are you gonna charge like you know what I'm saying my, yeah. my info is on I'm an idiot but like yeah. oh well here we are two summers later uh -huh. and then last year my birthday we went to a club for my birthday and I was fucking blacked out and I did the same thing bro I just gave them a debit card that had no bread on it and then I was just everybody's wondering like yo where is he getting all this fucking Hennessy from bro where is it go bro on God bro I'm do I'm do I'm fucking going in and out of consciousness, but mind you, I don't. I'm not trying to glorify this, but we, we had some great times. But mm -hmm. fucking yo, I I just remember like, bro, I remember being back at the fucking um, being at at the bar and trying to like be the motivational dude I am to the security guard, like, bro. I'm about to get my mans to come pay all this shit, big dog. Matter of fact, let's go outside real quick. And I went outside, bro, and I called them up. I said, yo. Bro, I have no bread to pay the tab, bro. <laughs> just pull up, bro. I'm going to fake a combo, bro, and just have the door open, and we're going to dip, bro. And then the security guard comes out and shit. I'm like, yo, this dude look like, bro, I'm talking about real linebacker vibes, bro. Uh -huh. I'm talking about, like, bro, like, he would have hit me, like, bro, the way he would have <laughs> hit me if he knew what my intentions were, bro, like, he might have got an NFL contract after that God shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? He was about to hit me with the Tony Joshi Martin if he knew my intentions. Mm -hmm. So I had to play it off good, you know what I'm saying? So I woke up to the car like, yo, bro, just give me my wallet, bro. Stop playing, man. I'm have the phone on my ear and just zoom, hopped in the car, out of there, bro. Perfect birthday. Shout out. Oh, shit. So for free? Yeah, everything. for the free every time, bro. Yo. And that was just like a light story. I feel like a real story. I, I can't think of nothing on the spot, but shit. We have a nah, lot more podcasts of this shit you, that we have yeah. to talk one day. When you get ran off with Juice Roll, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Shout out Juice Roll, too. Yo, we, um... Our friend Cody Shane, she was on uh she was on the Juice World tour. So we were just backstage at the Juice World show. So we seen him with the all NLMB with G Herbo and all them backstage. And Brandon Ingram, he was the tallest dude in the room. I'll never forget how tall. Yeah, but he Brandon Ingram like was less than all of us. Nah, yeah, hell yeah, bro. If he wanted to body up, Brandon Ingram, I got you for like ten percent of your fucking max contract. Uh, <laughs> if you wanna wrestle. But yo, so fucking I just remember fucking Chow Lee and Mason J. Shout out Mason J of uh NWP and MCNY. Another mm. good friend of ours, but um, yeah, so these two motherfuckers sneak into Juice Rose VIP and they just took a Hennessy bottle and two Patrons and we're just chugging Henny and shit. And I remember there was a dude on stage who wouldn't move out the way wearing all white and Mason J threw a cup of Henny on him to move out the way and bro did nothing. I think he knew like, you know what type of animal you have to be to throw Hennessy on someone wearing all white, bro. Right. And then like, yeah, that was a great fucking night, bro.
And Shout out to Knockdown. Like nothing. nothing. Bro, he just moved to the side of the stage and realized that, bro, there are some animals out here, bro. So that's just another <laughs> light story. You know what I'm saying? I try to glorify the shit, but like we really just have real good times with each other as friends, bro. We don't really go into... Uh, like a lot of people's students do a lot of fun shit, but they have no idea how close we were to not getting in or getting kicked out of somewhere. Yeah. It's like, bro, it's spontaneous, bro. I could count on our hands the amount of times that we went into somewhere that cost tickets or you pay for shit. And we, we like, bro, never have spent like $100 at any of these places, bro. Mm-hmm. We just went to Rolling Loud and me and Lonnie Love snuck in both fucking days, bro, for free. Really? You know I what I'm... Bro, we passed back the bracelets and we just... T- we're t- we were saying that like the homies, like, yo, we had to leave because our car was going to get towed and it worked both days. So, yeah. And I got to have that experience. How was, how was, uh, was that the one out of Miami? Yeah, yeah. How was Miami? Uh, Miami's actually really crazy. People are very psycho out there. I'll say that. You know, just off the end. What you witness there? Oh, uh, well, we got down and there was like five fatal car accidents on like one strip or like mad cars burning down. And then like right when I touched down, I seen that Roland Loud guy shut up. I don't know if uh, that's a real rumor or not. And then all that shit happened that was going on out there. But like for the most part, it was, uh, what I did learn from Roland Loud is I love seeing people's organic audiences because there was like I remember Gunna was performing and like the whole place we went where Gunna was so we walked over to see what Puya's crowd was and Puya's oh, crowd man. was still up and it's like yeah. bro that shit showed me like I'm like yo look at this dude like yo Gunna's performing and some skinny ass white dude with fucking long hair looks like Jesus is body in his set exactly. and it just shows you bro there's room for everyone to eat bro if, imagine Puya lived his life worrying about the Gunners of the world he wouldn't be who he, he is. Has. And I feel like that's why we're going to go organically because at the end of the day with a lot, I want any young kid that's still listening this far into the podcast to know is that you are the talent. The only thing these labels are giving you is exposure. You are what, like, yo, they wouldn't come to you if you weren't a nobody. Right. And, like, a lot of people get impatient and don't want to have the time to grow themselves. Mm-hmm. So they try to rush their process and, bro, don't do that. Because mm-hmm. whatever's not given to you is because you're not ready for it at that moment. And even if it's not, bro, I don't know. I'm not God. I'm an idiot. Don't listen to me. Mm-hmm. Well, God damn, I think we had a good, we had a good. Nah, podcast. yeah, first, yeah, first of many, my brother. Yeah, I appreciate sure, you, man. I admire you for sure, a lot. For sure. So, uh, thank you to Eddie P for coming on. Thank you for everybody here who yeah, was uh, a part of the vibes and everything. Nah, dead ass. Shout out to Spinner Podcast. Yep. Oh uh, yeah, it's Spinner Podcast. I'm about to say my old name again. Yeah, yeah. Spinner yeah. Podcast. If you guys want to be on it, please hit me up. I got until July eighth. Yeah, no, 7th. July 7th uh, to do ones in New York. And then I'll be back um, at the end of July into August and we'll be doing podcasts full time again. Uh, like this, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. If you're listening on SoundCloud, give that shit a share, or whatever. Yeah. And thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye.